What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and this is a Samsung LCD TV. It's around 10 years old, or actually 11 years old. It's made December 2010. It says it right here on the back of the TV. Let's go ahead and take a look. So the model number is LN46C650L1FXZA. So if you have a Samsung TV that is a LN4600 series, this may help you fix your TV. Here's the main logic board, here's the power supply board, here's the inverter board for the backlight circuit, here's the TCOM board for the LCD screen. So we're gonna turn on my meter right here, and it's in DC mode, I got a ground source, you can put it on the ground screw right here on the corner of the board. I just put it on the chassis, that works too. And I put my red lead, my positive lead, on the third wire on the plug going to the main logic board. Now, According to this chart, you got your five volts standby voltage that supplies the logic voltage to the main logic board to turn on the TV. And if that voltage drops below five volts, then the TV, the circuit will shut down. Well, the main logic board circuit will shut down. It needs five volts to run. So we're gonna put it on the third wire and we got steady, 5.1 and it's rock steady. Now after 30 minutes or so, it would drop below 4.8 and then the circuit shuts down can't run on uh, anything below 4.8 DC volts now I did replace a couple capacitors which is pretty typical if you have irregular or unregulated voltage uh, usually a leaky capacitor may cause that issue a swollen capacitor but not every capacitor that looks bad is bad sometimes they look good and can still be bad and also um, voltage regulators can cause the five volts can you know to drop voltage regulator is on heat sink now these are super hot now I've touched this heat sink it's cool it doesn't well it feels warm it doesn't feel hot now I touch this Whew, this is incredibly hot like oh man that's even hotter so this one and this one and this one all these are super hot and I did talk to Reese from uh, Fugo repair and he, uh, he told me to use a thermal camera so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a thermal camera. This is FLIR 1 thermal camera. You, you plug it into your phone. This is for Android. And let's go to the app. And this is the app right here. I don't know if you can see that. See that app? Touch that app. And turn on this device. You do have to charge it using a micro or type C connection. There, the light's turning on. Let's see if we have enough juice. So look at that. So you can see how hot the... No, oh, it just turned off. I think I have a dirty connection. That's probably what it is. I gotta fix my tools before I trouble... I use them to fix my TV. Which is funny. So now I gotta troubleshoot this. <laughs> to troubleshoot... The power supply, go figure. All right, the light is on and it should turn on any second. See, look at that. You can see how hot that is right there. Wow, that's 300 degrees. It says 300 degrees. That's ridiculous. So you look at this heat sink. It has two regulators on it and it's reading 105 right and then you read this one this one's pretty hot it's 165 70 170 it's going up and then right here oh my god 300 that one's probably bad i'm thinking greg from shopjimmy.com sent me this and you can check out shop jimmy they have a channel and i'll leave a link in the video description below to their youtube channel and also their website and they did send me this for free to do a repair for my Samsung TV. So that's what we're gonna do. And this consists of many parts actually. So those techs at Shop Jimmy, they fix TVs all day, every day. And I guess they have a repair log, all the TVs they fix, and they created a repair kit.
All right, so here we go. This is cooled down big time, but this was really super hot and these were pretty warm. This was 300 Fahrenheit. This side was 160 Fahrenheit and this was 105 Fahrenheit. I did replace these capacitors, but they weren't necessarily bad. I just tend to replace capacitors. If I, I don't have five volts standby voltage going to the main logic board, I usually replace the standby. This is like the section for the standby voltage this whole section right here. So I re usually replace these capacitors and this is to fix this board. The board number is right here, BN44-00341B. And that's what it, right here, BN44-00341B as in baseball. So that's the part number on the board. So that's the board number. And so we have a fuse, capacitors, mylar capacitor, an IC, regulators I believe, capacitors, and some transistors, and a fuse. And all the part numbers or location numbers are on here. So this is a desoldering station. Sometimes you gotta clean this out. I got a smaller tool. There we go. Let's go ahead and read it and compare it with this one. All right, so it's on auto right now. That OL is open line or open loop. It's not reading nothing. And so we are reading on the brand new transistor, 0.3, that's the voltage drop across those two terminals. Uh, actually, 0.4, I got a better connection. So that's 0.4 should read about 0.4, 0.5, which, which is normal. That's the voltage drop. And right here, we should read OL, and it does. So that is good. Let's read this one and see if it reads the same. OL. It reads the same. This one's pretty good. So I don't, I'm going to still replace it because... I mean, I already got it out, so probably add some life to it, right? So let me put some thermal paste on that. You just need a dot. So should be okay right there. And just put it right here. put my drill on torque one so I don't over tighten anything and crack the part okay so this one's good right here and we're gonna place 808 replace 808 I believe it's that one right here it says 808 so let's go ahead and do that one this is the one that was smoking hot so it should read different right you assume So now I'm replacing the one I think is the problem transistor. It's this one, okay. This is the best tool ever. Desoldering gun, 
I have, a, I'll leave a link to it in the video description so you guys can check it out. Alright, that one is not going anywhere. For some reason, this one's not coming out. So, what I could do is heat it up from the bottom and pull. There we go. That helps slide it out. Let's go ahead and read it. Make sure the part number matches up too. Right? So we got FDPF, FDPF. That's uh, 12N50T. So yeah, it does match up. So it is the same exact part. It's the transistor. And so let's go ahead and check that out. So we got 0.4. That's actually good. It's testing out good, but I don't know why it's getting so hot. Yeah, that's reading good. So we're reading the transistor right here. Should read 0.5. Oh, it reads 0.5 this way. PNP. All right, so it's 0.495. So that's good. And then this is 0.493. This is good too. And that's why it's tricky to fix stuff like this. Like it's, it's reading 300 degrees. That's not good should read under 120 Fahrenheit with a the thermal camera I'm still gonna switch it out just in case let's go ahead and do it and see if it's overheating still but I think something is causing it so I don't think I thought it was this part this transistor but it's not and so I'm now thinking it's probably something else in the circuit causing this to overheat. I did find something while installing all these parts. This does not look good. It's kind of burned looking. So let's go ahead and take this over here. Take a look at that. It's reading 0.0. It's almost shorted, but not shorted. I think that could be it. Let's go ahead and try to replace that diode. There we go. All right, plugged everything in. I have the clock set. It's uh, 9.50. As you can see, 9.50 or 9.47, really. But you can see that clock right there. I have my meter connected to the 5-volt line. And I got a ground source right there. And we're going to monitor and see if the 5 volts drops down below 4.9. And if it does, then the circuit's going to shut off. So let's go ahead and turn the TV on. All right. As you can see, when I turn the TV on, it got 
and then we're going to wait for an hour. So nine, actually 9.48, and let's wait until 10.48. And as you can see, the backlight is on. See the backlight glowing from the holes? That's how you know the backlight's working. here on the clock an hour later and we still got the TV running it's 5 volts it did drop a little bit it was 5.1 dropped down to 5.06 TV still running I replaced all these capacitors um, all these parts right here components and this one as well all replaced still running is it going to last so far so good but it's still putting out some heat right here and here it's still kind of hot this is not so hot well yeah it is this is pretty hot too maybe it just runs hot but i don't think it should run that hot and the next parts I would replace is the surface mounted diodes that are in line with these parts and they're underneath the board. I don't have them on hand so I couldn't re replace them. I have to order them. But so far it's working. I'll let you know how long this TV lasts. I'm probably going to give the TV away. <laughs> if the TV breaks, I don't want to be like paying. I'm like, hey, the TV's $100. Here you go. Oh, the TV broke the next day. I mean, I would give the TV away. And this is an 11-year-old TV. Guys, if this video was informative, give me a big thumbs up. And if you guys are interested in this repair kit, check out the link in the video description below. Subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on the latest tech videos. Later, guys.